Good morning, everybody. Uh, my name is Kyle Houchins. I'm a technical trainer for McNeil, and this is getting started uh, with Rhino for Mac. Um, so I'm using version 619, um, which if you're not using now, the service release just came out. Uh, do your Rhino check for updates here. Rhino check for updates. Go ahead and grab that and uh, and run that. Uh, it's the most recent build. has a lot of bug fixes and things like that in it. And, uh, and so uh, that's what I'm using today. So um, these videos are intended to be um, super casual. Um, some, I've had some criticisms like these, these classes are too hard. Well, they're not intended to be a class. It's intended to be a demo. Um, don't try and follow along, just watch, take some notes. Um, these do get posted on Vimeo uh, later if you Google Rhino Vimeo. Um, or Vimeo Rhino, um, you'll get uh, you'll get our uh, you'll get our page, and um, and so feel free to check it out there later. Um, like I said, I these are an hour. They I try to move pretty quickly, and um, and so uh, don't you know don't try and follow along because because it's chances are you're going to get lost. So, um, but what I do want you to do is hit the chat and ask questions. Um, if you haven't found the chat yet, look in the go to training window and find the chat. Um, say hi, let me know you can see the screen, hear my voice, all that kind of stuff. Um, if you see something that I do that you don't get, haven't seen, want to see again, something like that, um, just hit the chat, let me know. I'll stop, uh, answer questions and things like that. So um, I usually run with two monitors and I'm not, I'm only running up, I'm running off a laptop today, so I don't have my second monitor. So I will check the chat periodically, but if I don't get to your question uh, immediately, uh, just hang on a second and I'll, I'll get to it when I, when I check the chat. So um, today is, uh, I'm going to build kind of a, kind of a silly little product. Um, I being going into the Hall Halloween holiday season here, I was trying to think of like holiday themed things that we could do. And um, I, I came up with this idea. I think I saw it somewhere, um, uh, this candy bowl uh, that was shaped like a ghost. And I thought, well, that would be kind of an interesting exercise to talk about um, CV editing and Booleans and maybe even a little bit of rendering if there's time. Um, but, uh, I, I wanted to kind of dig into this a little bit and take a peek. And so to, to talk about what we want to build, I'm going to go to the picture command and my desktop and I put together this really scrubby little sketch. Um, if you've seen my videos before, then you're familiar with my scrubby little sketches. <clears throat> um, and <clears throat> I'm going to just throw this into the scene. And I was kind of thinking like, you know, this, this, this big open mouth, um, a little kind of ghost shape and some little fluttering kind of things at the bottom, uh, but lots of space in here to throw candy and things like that. Um, and so I was looking at this and the challenges are, are there's a couple of challenges here. Um, first of all, doing really organic stuff like this tends to be difficult in order to get the transitions done. And so some of the key points that we're going to be talking about are how do you build things like these hands? How do you get the hands joined into the body and you know not end up with really awful transitions? Um, we're also going to talk about how to start with a very simple shape, um, in this case a sphere, and add some detail to it and be able to pull out some of the shapes that we're looking for, kind of this little fluttery stuff around the bottom and then the little uh, the top knot here and things like that. And then we're going to talk about simple things like trim and Boolean and things like that. And then we'll get into some material assignments and stuff like that. So first of all, the sketch is kind of cocked in space. So I'm going to turn it just a little bit. And in fact, I might not even use this as, as an underlay. I may just poke this out here for reference, which is fine. Um, and I might even just scale it down a little bit because I just kind of want to use this as a guide. I'm not really even going to trace over it like I usually do for some for some of my videos. But um, so to get started, you know, the main shape of this thing is just going to be a big sphere, right? So we're going to start with a sphere, and we're going to come down here, go to sphere, uh, sphere center radius, and we're just going to hit zero, enter, and I'm going to hold down the shift key so that it constrains it, right? I don't want it to be like that in the scene. I want it to be organized. So I'm going to poke it right there. 
and then we're going to look at the points. And if I come down here and turn my points on, or if I come over here and turn my points on, um, <clears throat> you can see that the, the points are not necessarily set up wonderfully for editing. So if I go to the right hand view, you can still see, you know, it's really, it's not fantastic. So let's rebuild this with a little bit more, a uh, little bit more useful information. And I'm going to change this just to eight and eight. And I'm going to change this from a degree two to a degree three surface, which is going to allow me to be able to build, um, you know, this with, with some detail. Now, you'll see that the, the isoprams are kind of organized vertically, and I don't want that. I actually want them organized horizontally because I'm going to pull the pole. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, this is the pole of the surface. It's basically revolved around that surface. So this point right here is kind of key in order to maintain um, any kind of, you know, kind of sculptural integrity. And the other thing I want to do is I want to flatten this bottom out so that it, it is able to sit flat. So I'm going to just grab all of these points right here and I'm going to scale this to zero. And that's going to flatten the bottom. See that? And give it something to sit on. Now, we don't quite have enough detail to pull out this top knot right here. If I were to just grab this and pull it, it would kind of look more like a teardrop as opposed to a top knot. So I'm going to back off of that. And let's go to Edit, Control Points, and we're going to Insert Knot. And if you haven't used this command before, what this allows you to do is actually selectively add points to a surface and get some more detail. See that? I'm going to do the same thing at the bottom. I'm going to add a few more rows down here. And what that'll do is that'll allow me to, to start pulling out this detail up here with a little bit more control. So if I select this here now and pull up, you'll see that I get a much more kind of pokey center. And I can grab this and scale it. And actually, I might even move this up a little bit. And I might scale this in a little bit. Actually, let's add a little bit more detail because I think I like what's going on here, but I don't have quite enough. So I'm going to file edit control points, insert not, not kink. Kink, kink does exactly what you say. It makes a sharp edge and I don't want that. I want a smooth edge. So I'm going to insert a knot. And I'm going to put two more in here. And this is going to allow me to be able to get kind of a little bit more detail that I wanted. So I'm going to shift drag on the handles to constrain it. And let's go to the right hand view. Looks exactly the same, but I'm going to grab all of these points here and I'm going to use the bend command on these points. I'm going to just bend them back like that. And then I'm going to just pull and I'm going to do a little bit more editing here to get it kind of look what I want. You know, we kind of want it to make, we kind of want to make sure that it looks like a, looks like a ghost. We don't want it to look like an onion. <laughs> Maybe there's no way to do that. Maybe not, not have it look like an onion, but we'll, we'll play with it a little bit and see what we can get. We're just going to come in here and manipulate some of the points. I'm going to pull this a little off center. I'm going to go to the top view, nope, go to the front, right view, right view. Grab this, go back to the front, maybe pull this over a little bit so that it's got like a little bit of a little bit of attitude to it, right? We want to give it a little bit of a little bit of shape. And if we look at the shaded view, that's that's sometimes useful to evaluate kind of how things are going. And I think that I think that's starting to look okay. Maybe we mess with this row a little bit. Maybe we even delete that row. See if we delete it, see how it softens up again. If I delete that row again, I kind of like that a little better. And I might slide this entire thing over. We want it to kind of look like almost like there's a little kid inside and they didn't really put it on straight or something like that. And then the bottom, let's take all of these now. We've added some detail and I'm going to flatten all of these out by scaling to zero. And then if we go to the perspective view and grab some of these points, Using the seaplane icon, we can drag some little ruffles out of this. 
and there might not be enough detail here. We might have to we might have to add some more, but we'll start here and see how it goes. Pull this out like that. Kind of want to look like it's sliding across the floor, like the friction is dragging it across the floor. And I think I think we do need a little bit more detail. So let's go back to our insert control points, select or insert not. And I'm going to do it in the other direction now. I'm going to hit the T key, which is the toggle. And now I can put it in this direction. I'm going to just put two or three here, maybe two or three here. You see that it's not altering the shape very much, just a little tiny bit, but it's giving us more detail right where we want it, which is really useful. So we don't want to go crazy and start adding detail all over the place. We just want to be able to throw a little bit more in here. And you can see that because we're working in sets of three, we get nice kind of organic details out of that. Pull this up just a little bit. You know, this is, we do want this to actually be a product, so we want it to do things like stand up and not fall over and things like that. So maybe we need to add just a little bit of additional detail up front. So that's starting to kind of get a little bit of that feel. Let's maybe pull this out a little farther. Like that. And this is just something that you have to kind of just look at and decide, like, what kind of look are you going for? Almost looks like a little foot sticking through the front of that. Like that. So that kind of feels a little ghost-like, right? We've got a little detail going on back there. And maybe this, this row, I don't like that row being stuck out like that, so I'm going to put it back kind of where I found it. I didn't like that kind of rib that was showing up there. Maybe we we'll soften this by pulling these apart a little bit. There we go. That kind of feels a little bit like what I was hoping for. <clears throat> kind of looks like it's trailing out a little bit. Let me pull this back and down like that. There we go. And so we've got our basic shape. So I'm going to save this. Give it a name. In Rhino, you don't, uh, in Mac Rhino, you don't really have to save other than the first time because it's doing it essentially continuously in the background, anyways. But you do have to save it once in order to give it a name. So we'll do that. And from now on, Time Machine and all that kind of stuff should kick in and take care of us. So let's go back to the front view and let's go ahead and let's throw our mouth detail in here. Maybe we should put the hands in first. Let's put the hands in first. Maybe we even, let's go to the right-hand view, and maybe we grab all of this stuff, and let's relocate the gumball by clicking on the bunny tail and saying relocate gumball, and then coming down here, and I kind of want to give it just a little bit of, a little bit of attitude, almost like it's looking up at you like that. So I'm going to just rotate the entire thing like that, maybe these points. Come down just a little bit like that. That'll work. We can always adjust the shape if we need to. Maybe pull this one a little forward. There we go. We don't want to go too nuts. This is kind of a simple thing. But that'll give us kind of the attitude that we're looking for. And then, um, so let's do the hands. And the hands, I'm going to do these really simply. I'm going to do these with just three ellipses. And then I'm going to do some blending in between them to get to get um, you know the shapes that I'm looking for. And this this is always a little bit of a difficult uh, a difficult transition to do. In fact, I'm going to do three ellipses in a sphere, and then we're going to blend it all together. And then we're going to cut this right here, and then we're going to put another blend into the body. So this will be kind of a this will be kind of a clinic and trim and blend. So let's look at let's grab a sphere. Uh, uh, 
center radius, and I'm going to just stick it kind of up here where the palm should be. And then I'm going to grab some ellipses and let's make some little ellipse fingers. Kind of like that. Kind of like that. The palm, I'm going to flatten this a little bit, kind of stick it back. And then, let's see, I'm going to stick my sketch out here so it gets out of the way. And I'm going to rotate this just a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same thing again. And But I am going to copy make a second one and a third one. So we've got this kind of like little Mickey Mouse hand thing kind of going on. And <clears throat> and what I can do is, let's rotate this just a hair. Like that. And I'm going to blend all these guys together. And then I'm going to do a blend on top of a blend and a blend on top of a blend and a blend on top of a blend. So let's start with Let's start with this guy first. And what I'm going to do is decide where I want the blend to start and end. So I want it to start here. And I'm going to trim that. And then I want to figure out where I want it to blend into. And I want it to blend in fairly far like this. And you know, this is this has a lot of ish in it. We don't have to we don't have to get crazy about this, but let's isolate those two pieces and then let's blend these together. And we're going to use the um, the blend surface. And we're going to just go from here to here and you can see that right off the bat that gives us a nice, we don't have to go curvature, we can just go tangency, that's fine. And that gives us a nice blend between the two. So I'm going to join this up, bring everything back and then I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to trim this somewhere in here. And then I'm going to do the same thing I did before is decide where I want the blend to go. So I want the blend to kind of come in here like this, right? <clears throat> so I'm going to trim this. And then I'm going to run a blend surface from here. And I'm going to chain the edges on this one. Let's see, I want to auto chain that. Let's go to the perspective view. Hiding all the curves just to get them out of the way. Let's do blend surface again. <clears throat> and we're going to chain edges here and there. And you can see that that blends together very nicely. Go ahead and accept that. Join it all up. And then the same thing again. I'm going to trim here. So I might trim this out a little farther. Like that. And then we'll decide where we want to blend in, blend into. And again, we want to come in kind of far like that. And we'll trim this bolt out using these curves here and here. And then we'll blend again. Chain edges from here to here. And it's making kind of an awkward little blend in there, so maybe I'll pull this up a little bit. Maybe that's okay. Maybe I'll just leave it like that. I can mess with this a little bit. You know, if it didn't do what I wanted it to do, I can pull this in or out. Maybe I'll pull it out just a little bit to get rid of that weird little kink there. That seems to be working. And we'll join all of this up. So there's our first little hand. And I'm going to just take it and, and mess around with it and figure out kind of where I want it to be. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing I did before. These are kind of sticking way up in the air like that. So I want to rotate. 
from about here, I want to kind of like, where is it going to be like here, here, here? Anyway, kind of feels like it should be going boo, like scaring people. So I'm going to stick it up here like this. And we're going to do the exact same thing. We're going to decide where we want this to blend from, which is going to be kind of right across the wrist here, right? Like that. And then I'm going to kind of keep an eye on like this relationship. And I want to be like, you know, kind of basically perpendicular to this when I cut my, cut my opening. And I kind of want this to blend in something like this. And before I do this, I'm going to mirror it because I'm not, I'm way too lazy to build this thing twice. So let's take this and this, trim both this object and this object, and we will blend surface again, chaining the edges. And I'm going to drag the locator to the center there. And you can see that now it's like, it's really blending in hard. See how it's kind of overlapping on itself. So let's go to the perspective view. And let's take a look at what we've got. Now, I may have just kind of messed it up by, see this opening is just way too big. So let's back up a little bit. I don't like this opening at all. So let's, let's do this a different way. Let's trim it. Let's kind of go here and hide this. And then let's kind of identify where we want this to be. And I'm going to use a, an, a, a trick in here. And I'm going to say set C plane to view. And it's in here somewhere, set C plane to view. So now what it is, is it sets the construction plane to my viewport. And I can come in here and I can actually draw a circle in that viewport and then project it. Onto, and I don't want it to be like an exact circle, so maybe I'll just scale it a little bit this way, or maybe I'll scale it this way, actually, like that. And then we'll project this onto the surface, and we're going to get a much more accurate setup here, where we can now take this curve, and we can trim this surface here. Let's get rid of this one. That was the original. And we're going to trim this. Trim this, do it, so I cut in curves, there we go, there we go, helps if you do it right. And then we're going to go back to the front view, and we're going to trim this off. So we did a little, we used a little construction plane magic in order to get this to work. And let's shade this viewport again. Now let's do our blend, I'm going to hide these curves just to get them out of the way. I have a little hotkey set up for select curve, by the way, and the command is cell, S-E-L-C-R-V. If you want to type that in the command line, I have it set up on an alias, a hotkey, so I can just get rid of it when I need to. Blend surface, chain edges, blend from here to here. That looks a lot better. It's still overlapping a little bit, so I'm going to just pull it out so it stops doing that. Like that. I just don't want that overlap. And I've got a nice little, a nice little blend in there. Now I can leave it like that, and then I can try to add some shapes in here to see if that see if that helps. Let's see. Looks like that's not helping. Maybe we need to go a little farther. Maybe we've gone too far. Never know. And then we can individually adjust these so that we don't get that overlap. There we go. See that, how we added those additional constraints and now we can pull it out individually and get rid of as much of that overlap as we can. If it doesn't work, right, if, it just, if it's just not happening, and in this case, this just might, might be too much. What we might have to do is do like a little individual surface in here and blend from that to here. And then from that blend to this blend, we might have to do it in two steps. But I'm going to just roll with this. 
and let it go. And I'll show you an interesting little thing that we can do here. If I turn on these points, I do this often to try and save something that's twisted up like this. And you'll see that you can see like, see where these knots are? See how these are crossing over each other? So if we go in and we select just those knots, there's a really cool little tool in here that lives down here called Move UVN. And it has a little smoothing slider in it. And if I turn the shaded view on, this is easier to see. And if I smooth it in the U, see how those untie? And I can just take that knot out. See how that knot then goes away in the shape? Let's go back to wireframe. This is an ooh-ah moment, folks, if you haven't used this tool before. So let's grab these. You know what an ooh-ah moment is? That's when you see something and go, ooh, ah. No, no, no. So we're just going to smooth this in the U. We're just going to untie those. Until that knot goes away. See that? It's a lot nicer. So we'll join this up. Join this up. Let's go to render view and just take a look and see what it looks like. <clears throat> look at that. It's even in ghostly colors and everything already. I'll buy that. That looks all right. We may, if we had to, it like say you didn't like this, um, say you didn't like this transition, like this transition's too sharp. You can always trim this object somewhere in here and give this a little bit more room to run, meaning that we'd need a bigger opening here, and then blend from the edge of this out to that. But for the sake of what we're doing here, I think, I think I'm pretty okay with that so far. So let's do the same thing on the other side. I could, just, <clears throat> I could just mirror it over, but it's not gonna line up because the shape is not symmetrical. So let's clip this over here. And I'm gonna clip this guy somewhere in here. And then let's go to the perspective view, let's figure out about where we want that thing to land, somewhere kind of right in there. And then let's we're gonna do the same thing we did before, which is set C plane to view. And what happens if you notice the grid move, I don't know if you caught that because my grid's pretty faint, but what it does is it makes the C plane perpendicular uh, or parallel to your view plane. So it's it basically turns your screen into the construction plane. So whatever orientation your model is, you can draw right on in that view, which is which is kind of what we want. So if we go to wireframe, I can come in here and and then if I rotate around on this, you can see that it allows you to work in an oblique view. And in this case, it works out good because it looks like you know that that would be the orientation that we would want our model in to start with. So let's trim this <clears throat> using the surface, and I'm just going to delete it. And then we'll go back to our front view and my C planes are set up to automatically like revert back to where they're supposed to when you go to, you know, the different views. So when I went back to the front view, the C plane now is back to where it needs to be. And if you haven't used construction planes, there's a, there's a, in our level one manual, if you go rhino3d.com, go to the learn section, our, our level one manual actually has um, some good stuff on seaplanes and our level two manual definitely covers it in detail. So, and those are free. Um, and I'm just going to take a second and show you where that is in case you have not used it before. Mondays, if you hit this button down here, you'll get me or John Brock. If you're lucky, you'll get John Brock, but if not, you'll get me. Um, and then if we go to the learn page, uh, our level one manuals right here, our level two manuals right here. And this is the same book that we cover if you were to take one of our classes. We also have on-demand classes if you wanted to take a level one for Rhino or a level two for Rhino. Um, those are on demand and you can uh, basically get the live class that, that Mary and I teach uh, recorded and you can go through it at your own pace. All right, so we've got a question here. Let me hit that. Um, Excellent. Ayumi, thank you for joining us from Japan. Fantastic. That's awesome. All right. And so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to blend from this back into this. Just use blend surface again. Blend surface is really versatile. Um, 
it it really is uh, a phenomenal tool for for doing this kind of stuff. I'm just going to back this off a little bit. Back this off a little bit. And we've got just a little teeny bit of squish in here. I'm going to just run it and then we're going to turn the points on. And then let's go to wireframe. And then let's just untie this stuff. I'm just going to come in here and drag this. I'm going to grab this entire row. I'm going to use the cell U command, which selects all the points in the U, S E L letter U, all one word. And then we'll go over here and we're just going to smooth these out. I'm going to go to shaded view so we can see what's going on here. It's going to smooth these. And it's going to take a few passes to untie it, but you can see that once they untie, that kink starts to go away. See that? And sometimes there's a case when, when you do this and you get it close, like there's going to be a reveal here. Like if I, if we go to shape, if we go to render view, I don't know if you can see it here, but there's a little, there's a little dent here. That's not, you know, not blended as nicely as we would want. <clears throat> we'll watch this. Let's get rid of that. <clears throat> So let's just say that this is not good enough. In fact, let's, I'm going to put a material on this so that you can actually see what I'm talking about. If I do this in that, let's do it red so we can really see what's going on here. If we go to render view, you'll be able to see it pretty clearly that there is a, see that right there, that inflection? Well, instead of spending all my time trying to figure out how to get this surface to match this surface, watch this. We're just going to do a blend over a blend, which is kind of cool. So I'm going to make a new gap and I'm going to make it a little bit higher. And then I'm going to come down here and do a little bit lower. I'm going to trim both of these out. And then I'm going to blend from a blend to a blend. Does that make sense? So we're kind of sneaking up on this. We're going to chain this here, chain this here. And now I get a really nice blend into a really nice blend. And it shouldn't, let's double check, but it shouldn't be kinking on us and it doesn't look like it is. See that? So now it's super clean. And we might have to do the same thing between the body. Like if you had to trim back into here a little bit, you had to trim back into this surface and then out of this surface and then make a second blend over here. That's okay. It makes really nice results and it's really easy to do. But let's call this done for now. Let's take all this and join it up. It should join up. We've got a closed poly surface now, which is great. And let's see where we're at. So let's shade this and take a look. So I'm okay with that. That's starting to look pretty good. And so now we need to add our, we need to add our opening and our wall thickness and stuff like that. And for wall thickness on this thing, there's a couple of ways that we can do that. We can say, all right, if I'm going to just throw this through a printer, do I really need to wall thickness this whole thing? Or do I just need to have a cavity in here and then the rest of this stuff is solid? If you need it to be wall thickness, build it as a single surface, mesh it, and then we'll offset the mesh in order to get a wall thickness um, for a printer. If you're just looking for something like, you know, for a rendering or something like that, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to extract and copy this main surface. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna just scale it in just a little bit. And I don't need, I don't need these openings, so I'm gonna untrim these. 
and I don't need the top or the bottom. I just, I really just need this to be kind of like, you know, I don't need to get up into this stuff. And so what I can do is I can turn the control points on for this stuff. And I can even just delete these things. And it's going to leave an opening, but that's kind of okay. I can grab all this stuff. As long as it stays inside where it needs to be, let's go to wireframe and just double check and make sure, yeah, that's going to work. So I'm going to just cap this. And it doesn't look like cap is going to work on that. So let's, let's make a planar cut through here. I'm going to take all of these things and I'm going to, I'm going to uh, control click. Oops, sorry. Is it command on the Mac? Yeah. So I'm going to command click and I'm going to actually rotate the gumball without doing anything. If I click command, it will, um, it will uh, uh, extrude. But if I command then click, I can rotate or move the gumball depending on what I want to do. So I'm going to scale this to zero. I'm going to make those flat. Now cap should work. Everybody catch that, what I just did? So if you click on gumball, if I hold down command before I do anything and then click, I can rotate the gumball without affecting anything. All right? So I can make it so that it matches the shape that I want. If I command click on the center, I can move it up and down. If I command click on one of these waffles, I can slide it around here. So I can move, I can rotate, I can scale, I can do anything I want to do with the gumball without affecting the object. And then once the gumball is oriented, then I can use it to do what I want. So now we've got this thing in here and I, it's violating in the back. So let's, let's just do a little, let's do a little cleanup here. I'm going to turn on the control points. Actually, it's a poly surface now, so I can't. So I'm going to explode it. Then I'm going to turn on the control points. There we go. And I'm just going to delete these back here. <clears throat> it's not going to let me delete it. That's fine. I'll just tuck it in like that. So we just want it inside so that it's all good to go. All right. And then we'll take this and join it up. And we've got two separate objects right now, which is fine because we're going to join them with the mouth. And so I've got a lot of isoprams on the screen, which is making it kind of difficult to see what I need to do. So I'm going to go back to the... Uh, object properties and let's see I think that's here here we go iso curve density I'm going to shut this down <clears throat> and then same thing here okay that's a little too few iso curves <laughs> so let's maybe let's show them I guess that's all we're going to get that's fine Yeah, it's not quite enough isoprams to be able to see it without that in there, so we'll just work with it. <clears throat> All right, so let's look at our sketch, and it's got these kind of big happy eyes and this big goofy smile, so let's go ahead and throw those in. Um, the eyes, super simple. We're just going to do those with, with ellipses. And mirror that. Might make them a little bit bigger. Maybe about one bigger than the other. Maybe that's why he's a ghost. That's some sort of weird optical issue. And then let's check dry's let's draw his mouth. And I'm gonna use a three-point curve for that. So I'm gonna draw start over here, come over here, and then we're gonna draw way down here like this. And then same thing. I'm gonna snap to this here, and then that and then I'm going to isolate these <clears throat> using the isolate command that way we can focus just on that I'm going to use blend curve to, to put this together this adjustable blend curve I'm going to just blend from here to here and I can drag the points to make the corners I'm going to do tangency I don't need to do curvature and then I'm going to trim but not join 
And I'm going to do the same thing over here. <clears throat> I love this adjustable blend curve tool. It's so versatile for what you for doing stuff like this. And again, I'm going to trim, but not join. Now I'm going to join everything and do a close curve and bring everything back. Now, <clears throat> I kind of want, from the right-hand view, I kind of want the face of this thing to be pointing a little bit up. So if I grab these curves, I want them to actually, let's pull them out in front of the model so we can see them. I don't necessarily want them to extrude straight into the model like this. I actually kind of want them to go into the model like this. And so I'm going to rotate them and then use the extruder to extrude them into the surface, that little extrusion dot on the gumball. And then let's take a look and see kind of where everything lands. And that seems to be okay, but it's kind of like not quite aligned with the face. So let's go to the right hand view. Let's grab these objects and I'm going to rotate them a little bit more. This is all, you know, super subjective. Subjective, I'm just kind of making this up as long as I go along. And we might even be able to get away with a bigger mouth. People always tell me my mouth is too big to start with, but, you know, what are you going to do? All right, so let's grab this and let's scale it a little lower. Maybe even could we get away with wider? I think we can. Let's get away with wider. I mean, it is, you know, it's a candy bowl after all. You want to be able to get your hand in it, or both hands if you're me. All right. So let's go and let's make sure this is going through everything. Looks like it's barely going through, so I'm just going to scale it a little longer. And <clears throat> we can do two things here. Now the eyes, I don't necessarily want the eyes to go all the way through, right? I want them to be inset into the, into the object, but I don't want them to blow all the way through and actually be holes. So I'm going to cap these to make them solid. And then I'm going to Boolean subtract the body from the eyes. So I'm, these are going to be the objects we're going to subtract from. I'm not going to delete the input and I'm going to subtract these. And what it did was it makes the back of these match this surface. So now if I go to the front view, <clears throat> command, rotate the gumball so it lines up the way I want it to. And then I can slide it in just a little tiny bit, right? I want to just make a little recess in there. I don't want it to be a hole. <clears throat> and you can see how far it's inset here. Sorry, I'm going to. Mute and clear my voice. Hang on just a second. Sorry about that. Um, all right. So let's let's take the um, let's boolean difference this. So now we're going to boolean difference from this using these. And I do want to delete the input now. And that makes my recesses, which is cool. And it's sharp. This whole thing is soft. I may want to soften this and we'll talk about that in a second. But let's let's do the let's do the other parts here. So I'm going to trim this here. And then I'm going to trim the inside as well. Oops. And it looks like it might not be going all the way through the inside. Yeah, see how it's we're missing over here. So let's take a look at this and the inside, isolate, and then let's, I don't know whether it needs to be longer or maybe it's too wide. Maybe what we need to do is control, command, click on this edge. select this entire edge and then we can shift scale it just a little bit so it 
fits, now it's working. And it's okay that it doesn't match because we're actually going to blend between the inside and the outside. So trim this. And then I can delete this. And then let's bring it back. So we've got our inside mouth and our outside mouth. And we need to attach them. What are we going to use? I already tipped my hand. We're just going to use blend surf with chain. And that's going to do a beautiful blend between the inside and the outside. And so join it up. Now, let's see where we're at. Let's just go to render view and take a peek. It's looking pretty good so far. I'm pretty happy with that, except for, except for that. We'll have to fix that. It's a little bit of the inside poking into the outside, but that's fine. We can fix it. <clears throat> let's go to back to shaded view. And let's fix our eyes. And the way I'm going to do that, let me hide the curves. Select curves, hide. And I'm going to extract without copying this surface and this surface. And I'm going to delete them. And then I'm going to click on this and I'm going to shift drag and scale this eyeball in a little bit. Same thing over here. Shift drag, just scale it a little bit. Any handle, doesn't matter. And how are we going to put it together? Say it with me. Blend surface. And what we might want to do is reliably find blend surface. There we go. Is I might want to go soft here and hard here. So let's let's try that and see. Let's see what it looks like. So if we just do blend to blend, it's soft and soft. But what I might want to do is on the on the second edge here, I may want to go. I may want to go just position so that I've got a really, you know, a good spot, a landing spot for that deco. So we're going to make this black. Same thing. Back this off just a little bit. There we go. And then let's join that up. And I like that a little more because now if we go to render view and look at this, um, it's it's got a little it's got a little softness to it, right? So it doesn't have that doesn't have that really harsh. And this this transition here is not amazing. I'm not loving loving that transition. So we may want to do what we did over here, which is the blend and the blend. But I, for brevity's sake, I'm gonna just we'll just assume that we did that. So you would trim this, maybe make this hole a little bit bigger, and then do a blend into the blend. And you would get rid of that little witness line right there. We're 947 right now, and I've got some other ground to cover, so we'll just wave hand at that. We'll position them like this so you can't see it. <laughs> cheating, lying, cheating, stealing. Foundation of any good modeler. So let's extract the inside, and then I'm gonna just turn the points on. I'm gonna just grab these points and just poke them back inside. There we go. So that way we're not violating through the outside there. And let's just take a peek. Looks like there's a little, another second violation over here. Let's fix that. And everything else looks pretty good. Let's join the whole thing back up again. All right, so we've got this object and it should be it should be a, a closed poly surface. If it's not, let's just double check and see. So let's go and um, uh, let's go and take a look at our edges, show edges. And if we show naked edges, it looks like it's naked edge in here. And that's because we moved these points. So that means we have to redo this surface. So let's just redo it. It's super simple. Just going to delete it and then do another blend. <clears throat> Chain from here to here. Just let it run. I'm going to do tangent tangent so it's really soft. So we don't want any sharp edges in there. And now it's a closed poly surface. If we look down here, see this where it's just three surfaces joined into a closed poly surface. So that gives us our model, right? So now let's now let's do the fun stuff and let's start looking at um, 
doing some materials and things like that. So if we go to the materials panel here, and I'm going to switch over to the inspector panels, uh, and we're going to start making some materials. So I'm going to change this this from white or from uh, red to white. And I really want that just to be white. So let's go here. Go white, white, white. There we go. <clears throat> and we'll make it a little bit reflective. Not 100% reflectivity, but a little reflective. And then we're just going to frost it just a little bit. And drag this on and put it on there. So that gives us our plastic material. It's got a little bit of sheen to it. And then let's like make another material, another plastic material. And this is just going to be straight black. We want this to be, we want this to be pretty, pretty black. And then I'm going to shift command click the inside surface and the eyeballs. And we're going to do a sub object selection assignment. And this is cool. You didn't used to be able to do this. Um, it used to be that you had to break the model up if you wanted to, um, if you wanted to uh, assign materials to it. And that caused a problem when you were trying to print something because it, you know, then you'd essentially have two models. But in this case, we have just the one. It's still a closed poly surface. Everything's still closed up. Let's throw a, I'm going to get rid of this now. Let's throw uh, a little spookier background behind this thing. Let's go to our environment. Let's go to our environments. It's a studio environment. Um, and let's go to our render properties, actually. That's what we want to do. So our background is a solid color right now. Let's go to a gradient. And let's change that from white to gray to white to black. And then let's drop the white a little bit because we want this guy to punch out of the background by being nice and white. But we don't want black, black because then we don't have any, we don't get any shadows, right? We don't see any shadows down here. And we'll throw a little environment in here. Go to our environment editor. Oops. There we go. And let's look at let's see maybe what the what the other environments have to offer. It looks like it's not going to give me a preview on it, but let's say the um oh let's try the let's try the airport or renaissance hotel. We'll give it a little bit of interest. And we want to assign this as our global environment. And we want to also make it our reflective environment. But then we want our background color, our background setting to be, if we go to our render settings, we want the background color to be our gradient. And why did everything turn black? Let's see. Might it might have to reassign our materials. I might have bumped something in there. So let's do shift command click. We'll get this, this, this. Assign that. Might have too much reflectivity. All right, let's clear the environment, see what's going on here. I'm confused as to why that is. Uh... Let's go back to here. There we go. And then let's go back to our render settings and let's go back to our gradient. Ooh. So it doesn't like that for some reason. Interesting. We may have found a bug. All 
All right. <clears throat> we'll call that we'll call that a bug. I'll get that written up and we'll take a look at that. But that basically is our guy. <clears throat> Let me try setting this back to we go back to our gradient. Yeah, just goes right back to right back to black. All right, so I'm gonna have to check into that and see what's going on. But <clears throat> That is essentially what I have for you today. We can maybe give this guy just a little bit more shiny. Wouldn't mind seeing a little highlight or two on him. There we go. Something like that. Very spooky holiday candy ball. Any questions? <clears throat> Anything that you saw that <clears throat> you had questions about or you want me to cover again? If not, I think that's about what I have for you today. Excellent. All right. Well, I tell you what, we're right at, well, we're almost 10 o'clock, 9.55, a little early, but that's okay. Um, we aim to be about an hour, and this is, that's about as close as I think I'm going to get today. So, um, so I hope that uh, gave you a few things to think about. Um, the key takeaways I want you to, to remember are the adjustable blend surface, uh, the concept of blending onto a blend. If your blend doesn't give you exactly what you want, you can always trim it and do another blend. Um, and then um, uh, to, to really refine how you want those things to work. Um, if you notice the wrist over on the left side over here, um, this, this wrist over here isn't blended quite as nicely as this wrist. And this is the one where we did the second blend. So that's, a, that's an important thing to, to realize is that if you don't succeed at first, trim, trim again, and then blend it one more time. So, all right. Any other questions? If not, I'll let you go. Thank you very much for joining us on this spooky edition of, uh, of uh, Getting Started Rhino for Mac. Uh, there's no other questions. I'll let you go. I'm Kyle Houchins. Thanks for joining, and we will see you next month. Thanks, everybody.